It's Smart Med Time. On today's episode of Voiding the Warranty, this is a Rio Firefly scooter attachment for a wheelchair. Uh, as you can see, it's a little used. It's been uh, been around the block a few times. This belongs to a friend of mine, and the purpose of my having it here is because there are some issues where, uh, uh, well, he managed to break some things, and I'm going to try and fix those. But uh, the big thing is that this uses these proprietary battery packs that look sort of like this. Well, they look exactly like this because this is one. Um, the problem with these is that they are horrendously expensive. I think these are listing right now for about $600 each. And um, they don't give very much range. These are surplus scooter batteries. Um, they're significantly less expensive than the proprietary batteries that are on the scooter. And uh, I have enough of these to make sure that uh, my friend can get to where he needs to go. Now, one of these is roughly the equivalent of one of the uh, one of the factory ones. It's probably a little less because it's you know derated from service. But my plan is to take three of these bundled together into a package and have two of those, so a total of six of these batteries that will go on this beast and give him significantly more range to be able to go with. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to take it apart and um, do some things to it that are most definitely going to void the warranty, but I think at this point it's probably out of warranty, so I think we're okay. What do you want? What do you want? You, you think this is a toy? You think this is a toy that you want to play with? It's not. Nope. Hey, okay. okay. So the big thing that I need to do is to remove this piece, which is kind of a combination of the battery holder and all the control electronics. I'm pretty sure the control electronics are down in this puck. Now right now you can see they're not attached. This is supposed to be one unit. Uh, he's done a pretty good job of trying to keep it glued together and taped together, but uh, we're going to try and fix that too. So the first thing I want to do is remove this get it off the uh, off the frame so that I can access the electronics. All right, because it's a scooter, it's most likely Chinese made and that is I mean that makes total sense. Most of the scooters are made now. So I went with a five millimeter to put on here and that seems to be just about perfect. So let me take this off and go from there. Right, quick pickup. The uh, there are cables coming out of this. This one goes up to the head unit, which shows you know the battery voltage and speed and all that other fun stuff. Uh, this set goes down to actually control the wheel, um, which is here with a, uh, a cable so that I can take it off, which is good. I'm not sure about the one going to the upper control unit. Oh yeah, there's a cable right there, the connection. So I can, ah, okay, I should be able to uh, get this separated. Um, now these are interesting. I'm not entirely sure what those are, but I think they may be intended to be auxiliary battery connectors. Now that doesn't make sense. There's not enough, not enough current. These are signals of some kind and I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm not going to worry about them right now. I'll maybe take a look at it once I get it open. 
So this is actually a little wild. Um, I took off the connector. F uh, come on, focus. Focus! Uh, the connector for controlling this wheel has these very tiny conductors. I mean, I am surprised at how small those are. So also on the back side of this unit, I was surprised to find what I thought were two LEDs on the back side because I thought, why would you have LEDs on the back? Nobody would see them. So maybe they're for some secret, you know, secret messages or something like that that they don't want the consumer to know about. But no, it turns out that these are just uh, stubs left over from <laughs> from some glue <laughs> that got into the uh, the holes up here. So yay, kind of fun for that. And the uh, control unit is out now. I, uh, I can now take it apart and try and repair it as best I can. Alright, I have the, the controller separated here. Uh, and there's a few things about it that I found interesting. One is I was able to get the label on the bottom uh, which has a website on it that is LSTZ, lsdzs.com and I did look it up and they are the manufacturer of the actual controller itself while there is this little name tag on here I don't know if you can see it in the light it's kinda difficult there we go that's upside down for you but uh, it is Reention R-E-E-N-T-I-O-N they, as it turns out, are the manufacturer of the battery pack and this whole assembly. Uh, they have a model number. It looks like it's either in China or Taiwan. Uh, and it looks like they are an OEM dealer. They don't seem to have any sort of retail uh, availability. But, you know, just in case that information becomes important, it's cool. <clears throat> the wheel connection on here is a pretty standard, you know, three-phase uh, brushless DC motor. Uh, I was originally a little weirded out that it was just the three pins because normally there are three more pins for the Hall Effect sensor, but if I look in here, uh, there are three additional pins which are the feedback for the, the Hall sensor, I'm pretty sure anyway. This, of course, is the connector for the control head, and it's got a whole bunch of pins. I don't know what they do, and I don't really care for what we're doing here. Right now, I'm going to take the case apart. It does have a separation line right here, and it has three screws on the outside that uh, seem to be the ones holding it down. These two on the inside, I'm pretty sure, are for these pins. I may have to take them out in order to take this off if these are mounted to a PC board. But uh, I guess we'll find out. And happily, they are all through the same size. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take these two screws off as well. This is actually pretty well engineered. Um, I'm thinking that the uh, LSDZS is, this is a pure custom. Uh, pure custom controller for this for this battery pack. This is the uh, the battery pack input. I mean, it is it's a 36 volt nominal battery. It's a 10s uh, lithium ion pack, which is pretty normal. Um, and it is completely potted, which I guess that's not super fantastic but at the same point it's uh, completely understandable why they do that because durability is an issue and you really want your uh, your stuff to be durable especially if it's going to be bouncing around a lot um, yeah, there's nothing in here that's super uh, super difficult other than uh, I need to figure out a way to get uh, red and black wire out of here that is going to be accessible uh, and not pushed up against the frame or anything like that. So I need to figure out the topology of this a bit 
and uh, go from there. One other tip, uh, I like to do this when I'm taking something apart, uh, is I'm putting the screws back in the holders, uh, making sure that they are assembled enough so that they're not going to escape and disappear on me because uh, that is a right pain in the butt when that happens. So we're going to stay away from that. As for the case repair itself, uh, I did notice that this screw seems to never have been screwed in all the way and this one looks like it has been and that's probably why it broke off in this sort of irregular pattern. I mean it still broke off because it's plastic um, but I think this will make it uh, a little easier to <laughs> glue this piece back together. So I was able to pry this piece off. Now I need to clean up the glue where uh, Ron was trying to fix it. But uh, this piece is, you know, it just fits right back in here. So I can very likely just <clears throat> glue this back together. But I do want to put in additional support into the main frame here because that was, you know, I mean, it broke because this is a weak point. So if we can add a little bit more strength and get it past the point at which it is mounted up here, I think that will help quite a bit. Now Ron did bring some, or he did have some uh, some angle irons here, or some angle, well, I don't angle iron, uh, corner braces that he was using that seemed to fit pretty decently. I might reuse these, um, might modify them a little bit to reuse them, but uh, we'll see. What I need to do is attach a couple of wires in parallel to this to feed to a separate piece that is then going to be connected to the batteries. Uh, the separate piece is going to contain um, what I'm calling, or what are called ideal diodes. <clears throat> so I've got, you know, the parts here to, uh, you know, start putting these together and you need to make a couple of those to fit um, to fit for the for two batteries. I'll probably do three of them because uh, I want to have a third feed in there that can be strapped to another external battery. Ideally I'd like to put one inside here but um, aside from there's not a lot of room inside here I don't know, maybe I could do it. Yeah, well, um, if I did that, it would be a little bit safer because then these two pins would not be energized uh, if the battery, if this battery is taken out. Uh, the problem with that is I don't know if this scooter has regenerative braking. I don't have any information on the controller. I don't know if that's a thing and if I put in the ideal diode that is going to um, negate any any braking or any uh, regenerative braking that might come from the battery so I think what I will do is I will probably leave this connected maybe make a sleeve that can go over this if he's not using one of these batteries uh, just to keep it protected and um, go from there and just it'll be a little bit easier a little bit safer less modifications to this controller uh, and the less modifications I can make to this I think the happier I'm going to be I think the first thing I'm going to do is probably uh, get some JB weld and try and put this together not entirely sure yet there's I'm not sure which steps I'm going to take from here but this I'd like to get this back together in solid as part of whatever happens here uh, just so that this is even if nothing else happens even with any modifications that I make to, to this he can still use it as intended for the initial device that's one of the design goals I want to keep going with here so I was able to glue this piece on with some super glue it's not perfectly on there but it's close enough to where it was there's a little bit of space in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some JB Weld added in here for some strength. Uh, I've also got these little metal pins that drilled some holes down in here that I'm going to push up into um, 
this space in here also fill that with epoxy and then uh, this side I'm going to put epoxy in here so that this maintains some more physical strength in the bonding to the plastic itself. Hopefully that'll give this some more strength in case there's another abrupt <laughs> bang of something which broke it the first time. Uh, I've also added the auxiliary wires coming out. Uh, I decided to drill a hole in the aluminum portion of the case because it makes the assembly a whole lot easier going back together. Uh, I'm guessing that this will probably have to come apart at some point again in the future, but I'm hoping it's not going to be anytime soon. So I have it mounted and reconnected to everything. Uh, I didn't have to modify anything on it. It's mounted fine. It seems pretty strong. I mean, it's it's not great. I mean, it's it's not a great design to begin with having this, you know, pendulum hanging off of here where it can be broken off so easy but come on let's uh, power it up we'll put in the regular battery uh, first of all see if a regular battery fits that and yes indeed it does uh, make sure that's on yeah okay and next let's hook up one of these. These aren't the actual batteries. These are uh, different ones that I'm using, but they're the same voltage and uh, same connectors, so they're just fine. And uh oh, nothing. Um, crap. Yeah, we have to turn it on. <laughs> 40 volts or 40.9. Um, all right, let's make sure that the wheel spins. All right, she works. Well, this part of the scooter is done and that's really good. The next thing I have to work on is the battery mounts and um, I have some mounts or mounting points that I want to try. They should be here tomorrow, so I'll probably start putting that together. But this is where I'm gonna call this episode because the battery mounting is going to be its own hassles and rewards and all that fun stuff. But it's going. A little, uh, little hiccup at the end there. Um, all right, this I'm going to be able to get this back to run in working condition and make him happy. All right, till next time. See you guys.